On today's episode, I'm going to install the E3D Rapid Change Revo Nozzle for the Creality Machine. This is not a cheap install. I got the fully loaded with four different nozzle sizes, and I'm installing it on a low-cost Ender 3 Pro. Let's see if it's worth it. I'll show you how to do it, how well it works on today's Filament Friday. Filament Friday is brought to you by the generous donations of these Patreon supporters. Full disclosure, I did receive this kit direct from E3D Online. It's the full kit, which comes with a 0.2, a 0.4, a 0.6, and a 0.8 nozzle. You can install it by splicing wires with these butt connectors, or you can just replace the wiring all the way back to the circuit board. I have the 24 volt version for the Ender 3. It's 120 euros on the E3D site and 149.99 on the Amazon US site. The main advantage to this hot end is that it's all metal, and you can easily replace the nozzles just by unscrewing the old one and screwing the new one in place. You have to remove the little silicone cover to see what size it is. In this case, I'm gonna install a 0.6 nozzle. If you scan the QR code on the box, it'll take you right to the documentation of how to install it. There's plenty of pictures showing how to install it. There's also a little video which will step through it as well. But I'm gonna show you how to install it on an Ender 3. The first step is to remove the two screws that hold the metal shroud in place. There's one on the side and then there's one on top. Once you get these screws out, you can set the shroud aside. And now we can remove the PTFE tubing coupling and lift it out of the hot end. Next step is to remove the two screws that hold the hot end in place. Save these two screws because you're going to use it to mount the new one. I need to get to the electronics because I'm going to replace the whole cable. So you move the bed back and there's one screw on top at the front and then flip the printer around and there's one at the back and this is a longer screw. Now we flip it over and there's three screws on the bottom, two short ones in the front and then one longer one at the back. Once you get that one off, this cover should lift off and it's still going to have a fan connected which you can disconnect if you want. I'm just going to leave it connected. There's two screws in the terminal block that hold the wires for the hot end. Just loosen those two screws. They're the red wires with the heavy insulation. Once those are loose, you can pull the wire out. Next, I'll pull the white connector off on the end. This goes to the thermistor. Now I'm going to cut all these tie straps that holds this loom together. This way I can get the wires out. There's also tape holding a section of it to protect it when the cover goes over. So we're going to have to take that off as well. There's also a couple tie straps that wrap around the PTFE tubing. Cut those as well. The tape I mentioned can now be peeled back so we can get to the wiring. Just peel this back and save it because we're going to reuse it. So now I can get the wiring loom out and we can pull the wires all the way through and feed the new ones in. So here I'm gonna pull the old ones out and then the fun part of feeding the new ones in, which actually wasn't too bad. The replacement harness has ferrules on it, which is nice, and you slide those right into the terminal block and tighten them up. Now there's no polarity here. There's no positive and negative. It doesn't matter which one you put in, they're equal. The next step is to install the connector for the thermistor. The new harness doesn't have a lock on it, which I don't like. It just pushes in place. So you may want to put some hot glue on that if you want. I'm just going to leave it. Now I'm going to feed the other ends with the connector all the way through this loom. And it's easier if you bunch it up and then pull it through. I was able to get it through pretty easily and then pull it tight. So now I can reinstall all the tie straps that I cut and then we'll reinstall the tape. So I get it on both sides and now I tighten everything up and wrap the tape back around it. This protects the wires from being cut from the cover. I cut those tie straps and then I put the cover on and I tried to feel for any pinched wires or resistance. There was none, so I just tightened the screws in a reverse order that I took them off. I installed the two screws on top and now the cover was completely installed. Next I installed the new hot end. The two screws that held the old hot end go right through this thing and mount perfectly to the new one. I mounted one side slightly snug then I put the other one in place, and then I tightened them both. Now we just need to connect the harness from the loom to the connectors that are on the hot end. Make sure the white wire goes to the thermistor, and the dark wire goes to the heating element. The original PTFE tubing went all the way into the hot end. This one doesn't need to go that deep, so I can cut off the bad portion and just push it into the new hot end. I installed a locking clip to hold it in place. Now I can route the wires to the side in the shroud and then tighten the two screws to finish the assembly. I installed new tie straps to hold the wiring harness to the PTFE tubing. You do not get tie straps with the kit, so you're going to have to get those separately. 
I snapped it into the extruder clip and then I thought it was done. But then I looked at the nozzle and the cooling fan duct was way above the nozzle. And I couldn't find a replacement duct so I went to Tinkercad and I modified the one that I'd showed in a previous video to fit this thing. I'll share this on Thangs.com, I'll put a link in the description, but I think I got it right, it lines up perfectly with the nozzle now. Using a text editor, I saved this as a .g code file, I ran it on the machine, and this did a full PID calibration. I used my 0.6 profile for Cura, and frankly, I don't think it printed that great. This benchy does not look that smooth. I did use my Cura 0.6 Good Profile. I shared that in a previous video. You can still get it before the end of the month. I'll put a link to it in the description below. Download it from things.com before it's gone. I love the fact that I can change the nozzle size easily on this machine now, but I'm disappointed that there were no profiles in Cura for this, at least none that I could find. So if they're out there and E3D has supplied them, let me know in the comments below because I couldn't find them. So I guess I'm going to have to develop my own profiles just for this hot end because my existing Cure profile for the stock hot end just does not print as good. Overall, I'd say it's a really quality install, quality components. I really like the features, but it's definitely going to take some time to get this thing tuned up. So I'm a little disappointed in that. I just don't know if it's worth the price that they're charging. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the other videos popping up. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon is one way. And if nothing else, click on that Filament Friday logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Filament Friday.